was the one month anniversary of the devastation that hit Japan. And um, when we look at this, um, also another significant event happened as well. The USS Ronald Reagan was off the northern shore of Japan, and it was exposed to the radiation cloud that Fukushima, the Fukushima Dashi plant had leaked out. And there was some worries as to whether or not the crew members had been exposed and they were being detained for a while. And as they were, um, as they were detained and they were um, said that they were perfectly fine, the captain said that the only uh, problem was is that the radiation cloud left the dust on the deck and that was the only problem left. Um, when looking at what happened in Japan, we should also look at what can happen right here in California. And there's two major uh, nuclear power plants. There's one in San Onofre as well as in Diablo Canyon. And if we look at the Diablo Canyon, uh, San, I'm sorry, San Onofre plant, it's only 40 miles south of right here, um, in, right here at Fullerton. And so today, this is the reason I'm going to inform you about why, about the process of a nuclear meltdown. I'm going to tell you about how a nuclear process can begin, the meltdown process can begin, as well as um, the major components of a nuclear reactor, and finally, um, how this can potentially happen right here in California. And when we look at how a nuclear process can begin, we look at Japan and it began with a natural disaster. An earthquake, a 9.0, tri uh, triggered a tsunami which totally devastated um, Japan. And um, according to the ABC um, news broadcasting station, 10,000 um, citizens are dead and 17,000 and more are still missing. And so it's for this reason that um, we should um, look at like how it can begin and um, the fuel rods at the Fukushima Dashi plant began to acquire a greater temperature. And Jenny Martyr of the <clears throat> of the PBS News Hour says that the reason that this uh, crisis in Japan is so relevant is because that the fuel rods have begun to acquire greater temperature and they need to be cooled. And um, <clears throat> When uh, looking at the fuel rods and why they begin to heat up, it's because of a process process of nuclear fission. And nuclear fission, as these fuel rods begin to heat up, it begins to heat up the water, which keeps them cool. And as the water heats up, it begins to boil, and that boiling water turns into steam, and steam powers the turbine, and the turbine creates electricity. Um, and <clears throat> this electricity. Uh, um, so, um, <laughs> uh, when looking at the major components of a nuclear reactor, there is uh, there is the core of a nuclear reactor, and this is where the uh, the heating is contained, as well as the uranium and other fuel rods, and, and um, the next major component of a of a nuclear reactor is the coolant. The coolant is most often <coughs> water, and um, according to um, Nick Torn of um, a recent article that he wrote, he stated that actually in the U.S. water is the um, major, uh, is the requirement for the U.S. Um, nuclear power plants, and <coughs> also another major component of a nuclear reactor is the turbines. As the coolant is moved throughout the core, it goes into the turbines, and the turbines themselves are able to remove the heat, and um, it's able to create electricity. And um, there's also the containment center itself, and uh, this is what we can see from the outside. The containment center serves as a um, barrier between the outside world as well as what's happening on the inside so that there, there is no problem, and it's usually because um, it's separated with concrete. And um, there's also the cooling towers as well. <coughs> the heat that is produced within a nuclear reactor is, um, cannot always be used um, into uh, feasible energy, so they release it in water vapor, which is not as uh, detrimental to our environment. And um, also, when we look at the nuclear reactor, it's important to look at what can happen right here in California with our major um, nuclear power plants. Like I mentioned before, San Onofre is just 40 miles south from here, and um, the San Onofre power plant is built to withstand a 7.0 earthquake. And um, um, the, uh, the, 
the earthquake that um, hit Japan was a 9.0, and um, um, uh, as <coughs> And um, also, when looking at the um, what happened in Japan, uh, the the our federal government issued the the nuclear regulatory commission to survey R one hundred and four uh, power plants right here in Cal in the United States, and all of them have met the requirements of the safety measures that are needed according to their risk factors of where they where they fall in the United States, and. Um, um, when looking back at San Onofre, uh, I told you about the how it's built to withstand a 7.0 earthquake, but there's also a 25-foot wall that surrounds it as well. And um, when we look at the tsunami that hit Japan, their uh, waves were 30 uh, feet and over. And um, so if this, this type of devastation were to happen here in California because we do sit on major fault lines, um, it, could be ten it could potentially be very... Uh, detrimental to us because the San Onofre plant um, actually produces 20% of Southern California's energy sources that powers about 1.4 million homes. And um, <coughs> so it's really important that I have informed you today about how the nuclear process um, works. Uh, I told you about how it can begin, and it can begin like with Japan, with a nuclear disa uh, natural disaster. Um, I have also told you about the major components of a nuclear reactor, which include uh, the core, the coolant, the turbines, the um, containment, um, the containment unit itself, as well as um, the cooling towers. And um, finally, I have told you about why it's important that we look about, at this in California, because San Onofre is so close, and if something this devastating were to happen right here in California, it could, it could really affect us in a major way. And it's important when we look back at the USS uh, Ronald Reagan and its exposure to the radiation, we need to understand how this radiation can be uh, detrimental and very harmful potentially to us and, um, and uh, so that way we can learn uh, if this were to happen in the future, how we can learn from it.